really enjoy maintaining and caring for unique plant species. One of the few things that I love just as much as plants are animals. So growing up, I really wanted to find that perfect combination of both. I ended up here, Nepenthes pitcher plants. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about what this thing is, how to care for it, and why you may want a happy little death vine just like this one in your own plant collection at home. Now, over the years, I've kept most of the generic types of carnivorous plants. Sundews, pitchers, flytraps, you name it. But I've had the most success with these things. This is Nepenthes alata. There's lots of different species of pitcher plant out there, which are amazing, don't get me wrong, but alata is hardy, fast-growing, and has that classic pitcher plant feel. The cups are pretty hefty too, which makes any beginning grower feel like a pro, and this thing thrives under good condition. So let's dive deeper into it. Alata is a highly polymorphic vining tropical pitcher from the Philippines. Polymorphic simply just means that this species can be made into tons of different looking hybrid plants. Think of this as long-haired retrievers versus short-haired retrievers. Both are the same species of dog, but they differ slightly in appearance. This is neat because you could have all sorts of different looking pitcher plants in your collection that are technically the same plant, with similar if not the same care. So if you're unsure of what plant you have, but it looks super close to this, then it's probably an alata. Like most of you may know, this thing eats bugs, and if you keep your new carnivorous friend outside, you'll quickly notice how efficient it is at catching them. How it accomplishes this is it uses nectar to attract the bugs. The attracted insects will land on the lip of the cup and are enticed inwards. This cup or pitcher is actually a modified leaf. The unsuspecting prey will slide towards the center of the trap, eventually falling down into the plant's digestive enzymes. There's also tons of tiny downward facing hairs inside of the pitcher that prevent anything from crawling out. Now before you ask, no, it's not really acid inside of here, sorry to disappoint. You can't dissolve your victim, so don't go out and buy one of these things if you're trying to melt the neighbor's cat. It's evolved over thousands of years to eat bugs, and that is what it's going to do. In fact, you can get it very sick if you try to feed it anything other than small bugs. Before anyone complains, yes, there are some species of pitchers that can eat bigger things like lizards, birds, and even mice, but those are very rare plants and are not often sold. This is a vining plant, so you'll ideally want something for the plant to latch onto and trail upwards. What I like to do is get a hanging pot with great drainage and very long supports. I also use bread ties to help the pitchers hold on. Bread ties are nice because the paper doesn't damage the plant. Metal ties are not suggested because the metal could harm the surface of the plant. You could use string or zip ties, but I like bread ties because I can remove the whole vine easily. You'll want to place the plant in bright, indirect light. Think of under a porch like mine is, or a nicely lit, warm windowsill. If you're putting the plant outside, please give it some shade. If your plant looks spindly, it's because there's not enough light and sunburn will happen if it's too bright, so just watch out for that. Temperature-wise, I keep my plants around 65 to 95 degrees, but there is a catch, humidity. Humidity is what makes or breaks this plant. At low humidity, it'll grow, sure, but it will not produce pictures, you know, the whole reason why you want this plant. So here's what you've gotta do. Keep it in a warm place, or an enclosure like a terrarium, and spray it every day. Don't go too crazy on the water because it'll soak the plant. We don't want that unless you have really good drainage. Now here's the secret. Spray every tip of each leaf. On the end of each leaf is a developing pitcher. These pitchers are covered with fine hairs that are designed to trap water and humidity. This will help them grow as opposed to drying up or not growing at all. You'll know you have a happy plant when each leaf has a trap at the end of it. You'll need to do this for sure if you're keeping your plant inside. Water is immensely important to the plant. Remember the hanging pot? Well, that's because you can't let this vine sit in standing water like many other carnivorous plants. That'll make it too wet and die very quickly. You'll also want to watch what water you're using on this. I used distilled water for a long time just to be safe. Now I use tap water on my plant because it doesn't seem to have any problems with it. If you want to use tap water, slowly introduce it. If the plant seems to hate it and it's not looking so hot, switch back to distilled water immediately. Everyone's tap is a bit different because it all comes from different water sources, so just be very mindful of what you're doing. Keep in mind that some taps are filled with harmful chemicals and minerals to your plant. You don't need to fill up the pitchers with water as they'll fill up themselves. Remember, they got their own little magic enzymes inside. That being said, I do fill them from time to time because I just want to and it doesn't seem to hurt the plant all that bad. Though I am sure it does dilute the intensity of the digestive juices a wee bit. With regards to potting media, I like to use a mixture of orchid bark, sphagnum moss, peat moss, and perlite. Try to get the largest perlite you can. There's a type, I believe it's called popcorn perlite, and that's what I like to use. What makes popcorn perlite special is the chunks are very large, which helps to prevent the plant's roots from getting sick. It also helps the plants to breathe and keeps them from getting too wet. When it comes to repotting, well, it doesn't really need to be repotted all that often. Maybe once a year at most, and even then, I think you need to be careful. The reason for this is the roots of these guys are really tiny and don't grow very much. They are also incredibly fragile. 
When you decide to repot, make sure you're very careful and don't pack the soil down too hard because it could damage those sensitive roots. And yeah, that's really about it. Honestly, they aren't too hard to take care of, and I've been really enjoying mine climb up this outside support. I've even started some new cuttings off the main plant, and they've been doing just fine. Maybe I'll do another video sometime covering how to make these little plant clones. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about these amazing plants. Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again on the junk drawer.